Hi butterflies, welcome to my garden. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And now let's get into the video. Hi everybody. Um, it's me, it's your girl Calypso, and you know, I'm back again. Normally I would do a little cute happy dance, you know, about how I'm back again. But today I'm just a little um on edge. I'm a little um I'm a little sensitive today, so I just, I can't do it. And at the moment, um, excuse my appearance, I'm a lockdown, you know. I live in Sydney and at the moment we're on a lockdown. So this is pretty much, you know, this is me. Um, so, um, I have not really been as active on social media, but every now and then I will take a break from my little Zen bubble and I would look at it was like trending on social media. So I came across this video that went viral of this rapper called The Baby, whose real name is, um, hold on, his real name is Jonathan Lindale Kirk. So he was performing at some festival called the Rolling Out or Rolling Loud Festival. And um, I think somewhere during his set, you know, he went on this whole rant. And yeah, this is what he said. You didn't show up today with HIV, AIDS, any of them deadly sexual transmitted diseases that'll make you die in two, three weeks, put a cell phone light in the air. Lady, if your pussy smell like water, put a cell phone light in the air. Fellas. Lights up. Fellas, if you ain't sucking nigga dick in the parking lot, put your cell phone lights Let's in the air. Let's be real about this shit. Yeah, keep it fucking real. Some of y'all niggas suspect as a motherfucker. Let's be real. Yeah, he actually said that. So, this is the thing, right? In my opinion, right? This is, forget my opinion, this is just a fact. You, Jonathan, because I'm not even going to refer to you by your stage name. I'm going to refer to you by your government name, okay? So, you, Jonathan, you are homophobic, transphobic, trashy, ignorant, low vibrational Negro, okay? You are the type of dude that, you is the type of dude that just, unfortunately, unfortunately, you've been given this platform, right? And then you decide to use your platform to perpetuate this kind of nonsense that's going to make people like me look like, look less than. Because what? We fall under the LGBT? You know what? Let me, let me just take a step back because I don't want to get too riled up because I was already sensitive when I got on camera. So, at best, I played a few of his music just to get a feel for who he is as an artist and to me he is mediocre at best this man is mediocre he is there's nothing original about him there's nothing original about his craft his persona his style or his belief there's nothing original about that this is something that's very common in like the hip-hop community the black community african community or basically any ethnic minorities that's just a lot of ethnic minorities that's based on religion. This is just a very common rhetoric and it's so tiring. And whew, let me get into that baby, right? So I started trying to research him and read about who he is. So this is a man where there was a footage, there's actual footage of him slapping a black woman or did he punch her? Whatever, he was violent towards a black woman at some party, club, whatever. He was violent towards, towards his woman. But somehow, people overlooked that. Well, I guess maybe if she was Rihanna, it would have been a different case. But people still kind of forgave Chris Brown for that one, but that's another story, right? Then, this is also the same man who was, um, he was dating this girl at the time called Danny Lee, who is, in my opinion, that's not a black girl. I don't care what she is. But that's not a black girl. She can't afford, she cannot claim to be black because that's not a black girl. She made this trashy song talking about yellow bone. That's why he wants yellow bone, yellow bone. Now, for those who don't know what yellow bone is, this is a subsection of black people, men or women, who are very light skinned. And they are sometimes, they're closer to white because of their skin complexion. So light skin, yellow bone, pretty much what it is. So when you think of a yellow bone, you think of someone like um, like an Alicia Keys, like a Beyonce, like a Jasmine Saunders, like a Mariah Carey, 
those are the yellow bones right um so she he was under the comments basically hyping her up and co-signing what she was saying when look at his skin complexion you're not exactly light bright yourself, Mr. Mr. Jonathan. You're not exactly light bright your damn self. You're dark. Not that there's anything wrong with dark. I think black is beautiful. Clearly, the black is beautiful movement skipped you because you're black. You're dark skinned. And not only that, you have kids that are dark skinned. Your ex girlfriends are dark skinned. Your baby mamas are dark skinned. Or did, you, did that conveniently go over your head or something? This is why I say he's an ignorant Negro. But I'll get into more of why I think he is trash, okay? Trash. Then, a few weeks ago, this same man, and by the way, forget that stupid stage name, the baby, because this is a 29 year old, grown, fully grown, fully formed man, okay? So that whole that baby nonsense, forget it. He is a grown man, and I will address him as one, okay? A few weeks ago, he posted a video of these two young boys who were trying to sell candy for a cause, right? I don't know what cause it is, but they were trying to sell candy. And he took this video and posted it online, basically branding, and those boys, they couldn't have been more than 13, and I'm being generous with that estimation, right? So he posted this video, basically branding them as hustlers, finessers and scammers and then you have a whole and then you had a whole bunch of ignorant stupid ass negroes in the comment section who were co-signing what he said co-signing what he said to these little boys really because from the context of the video that he posted they were just trying to raise money and they <sighs> so we let's just that's, I'm just trying to lay down the foundation of why I started with what I said. So then, let's get into it. So then, a few, maybe a week ago or a few days ago, at the Rolling Loud Festival. By the way, the tickets for this festival are like upwards of $400 and up for the festival. So there's people who paid, who paid good money, good hard-end money, because let me tell you something, 2020 for the average person was hard, okay? 2020 was a hard year for the average person. So for people to spend that amount of money to come and see your dumb ass on stage, they must have liked you. For what reason? I don't know, because like I said, you're mediocre and nothing original or special about you, okay? So they go on stage, right? He's on stage and then he brings out Tory Lanez, who, by the way, that's, all, that's another shady, shadowy, sinister character as well. You can Google him for yourself, Tory Lanez, with the struggle hairline, that one. So, and <laughs> you know what? No offense to all the vertically challenged men everywhere, but watching those two men, those two low vibrational, malevolent negroes on just hop around on that stage it was like watching two mischievous toddlers hop around on a play date i said it um <laughs> so somewhere during you know he said he makes a call to action this is jonathan hmm? he makes a call to action he says Oh, by the way, what's the definition? According to my definition of a, what what's a call to action? So, hmm. This is a statement that's designed to provoke an immediate response. So, of all the things that you could talk about in your call to action, you're talking about people with HIV AIDS and STDs that will kill you in two to three weeks. You're in a packed audience in the middle of a pandemic. If anything, COVID-19 is, like, COVID is likely to kill people in less than two to three weeks than anything else that you were alluding to. Let's, let's be real. And also, a lot of those audience members, I can tell you, a lot of them were not vaccinated and a lot of them were not wearing masks. But, and a lot of them were not like taking any um, hygienic or sanitary caution. Because in a festival, whatever, but that's not a story. So you already in a packed audience where in the middle of a pandemic, but you know, it is what it is to each their own. And then you're making a call to action and that's the first thing that comes out your mouth, off the top of your head, that's all you can think about. Now, I am not the type that you will find giving fellatio in a parking, in a car, in a parking lot. That's not who I am, but 
I'm not about to shame what the next person is doing. I'm not about to shame somebody who has an STD, which some in a lot of cases, most people don't do it. Most people don't contract STDs through any fault of their own. It's because of it, it's because of men like you who basically sling their dick around like Tic Tacs and then unwillingly spread STDs to their um, significant others. It's a lot of men like you are responsible for the spread of STDs. Let's be real. You want to say keep it real on your, as you were saying, keep it real on your stage, keep it real, keep it real. Let's be real. It's men like you who are actually out here spreading the STDs, okay? How many baby mamas do you have? How many, how many um, kids do you have by several women? Come on now. So basically, you're out here raw dogging women and getting them pregnant and having kids that are gonna grow up without a positive male role model, like a positive male role model. So, and you're worried about what the next person is doing. Why don't you worry about yourself, dude? And you were really specific in your rant. Ugh. There are several things that I need to unpack here because, first of all. His, like I said, his rhetoric was really specific. So it makes me go, hmm, are you trying to tell us something? Why are you so bothered, dude? Why were you so, like, why did you have to be so deliberate in your call to action? Why? Ugh. So yeah, there's a few things that I want to unpack here. And I took some notes, right? Number one, the misogyny of it all. He's like, oh, if your P-U-S-S-Y doesn't smell like, uh, smells like water or something. <laughs> okay. We'll just skip that part because that's like, I guess that's to be expected from his kind, you know, the Neanderthal low vibrational Negro. And there's also the HIV shaming and STD shaming. You do realize that HIV is not necessarily a gay disease anymore, right? Because there's a lot of people, especially people in my community, you know, the black people, Africans, African Americans, and a lot of ethnic groups, when they steal that stigma, when they hear, oh, this person is gay or this person is trans, automatically they see you as somebody who's vulnerable to catching HIV. You do realize that it's no longer an LGBT disease, right? It's also, matter of fact, there are more people, there are a lot more people who are not LGBT that have HIV, that are dealing with HIV. And this is no disrespect to people with HIV in general because I've known some amazing people who deal with it. But you felt the need to shame them on your call to action. <laughs> And, your est and if you ain't got it, that's going to kill you in two to three weeks. Like, really, how ignorant are you, sweetheart? This is why education is important. I'm sorry, because he doesn't sound like somebody who's educated or knowledgeable on anything, but... <sighs> and just nothing. Then there's also the homophobia. If you ain't... If you ain't in the parking lot, giving, if you're not in the, I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to keep it clean, okay? But according to, paraphrasing what he said, he's like, oh, if you're not in the parking lot giving fellatio, if you fellas are not giving fellatio in the parking lot. So he's specifically saying fellas. Now, look, English may not be my first language, but fellas usually refers to men, right? And so what kind of men are giving fellatio to other men in the parking lot? Come on. <laughs> so then... Um, he makes that and look, he makes all that rhetoric and it's just so like, it sounded so deliberate and his hype man, his DJ person was like, oh, some of y'all is, some of y'all are suspect. In other words, some of you are suspicious, you know, some of you are, you know, you look suspicious or you look closeted, basically. That's what you're saying. And we all know when when they there's a lot of men who don't even recognize or or um, think that my existence as a trans woman is valid. So they will always see me as a gay man in a dress. So basically, I also fall into that category that they're referring to, huh? <laughs> okay. So um, he, like I said, this is a fully grown man, and he was very much aware of what he was doing. Like he was very much aware and he was very deliberate in his delivery, okay? Because he offered a rebuttal. And this is <laughs> and this is his this is this is his rebuttal. You can't make this stuff up, but this is what he had to say. I say if you don't got AIDS, put a cell phone light up. I say if you ain't suck dick in the parking lot, put your cell phone lights up. So I could drop my next home. 
I wasn't going on no rant. That's called a call to action. That's what that's called, because I'm a live performer. I'm the best live performer. I'm the live show killer. You interact with your fans. You get what I'm saying? Look, all the lights went up gay straight. You want to know why? Because even my gay fans don't got fucking AIDS. Stupid My gay fans, they take care of themselves. They ain't going for that. They ain't, they ain't no nasty gay niggas. You know what I'm saying? They ain't no junkies. You know what I'm saying? On the street. Man, hell, you talking about, nigga? Then I said, if you ain't suck dick in the rolling loud parking lot, put your cell phone light up. You know what my gay fans did? Put that motherfucking light up, nigga. Because my gay fans, they ain't got niggas. They ain't going for that. They got class, nigga. They ain't sucking no dick in no parking lot, nigga. You got to get a room, nigga. A good one. Five-star hotel for them niggas. Or goddamn. Yeah, you got to wait till they go to the crib, nigga. They ain't just going to be out here just... Doing no anything, yeah. If they a fan of me, they got them. They on some big dog shit. We ain't just going for nothing, you know. Even my gay fans got standards. Y'all nigga tripping. Watching that is like, it's like basically he was basically just throwing gasoline into the burning flames. Oh my God, he calls that a rebuttal. <laughs> now I know I wasn't, I was never really a fan, so I was already living life just fine without your existence or knowing about your existence. So I don't care either way. But my issue is like, is the filter down effect because you're somebody with a platform, and there are a lot of people. I don't know why, because like I said, you're not my cup of tea. But there's a lot, but for some reason, there's a lot of people, thousands of people that support you. There's thousands of people that look at you as some kind of role model, which is bizarre and ironic. But, so therefore, you have some form of influence over an already set of ignorant people. And now, when they hear you spewing that kind of rhetoric, it's then going to trickle down to the people who are more vulnerable. You never know what kid was in the audience. You never know what kind of people were in the audience, you know, that were looking forward to seeing your performance and then you basically disrespected them like that. And then in your rebuttal talking about, oh, my fans, they ain't no gay ass niggas. They ain't no nasty, they, don't, they, don't, they ain't no nasty ass niggas. So basically, if you have HIV, you're nasty. If you have, um, whatever it is, whatever else that he says, if you're the opposite of everything that he said or everything or what he was referring to, then basically you're nasty. My, my fans, they, they, they prefer to be uh, checked into, oh God, you know what, I'm not even going to quote him because it makes my brain hurt to even say it out loud. Like seriously, you need to get some help and get some education and get some therapy because you are sick. And then a lot of celebrities like, you know, Dua Lipa, I hope I'm saying her name correctly, Elton John, I think Madonna, a lot of people have come out and rebuked his statements, which, you know, which, they, which is which should be applauded. So they've come out to rebuke his statements and kind of stood in support of the LGBT community as well as victims of HIV and whatever else. And on the other hand, there's also been celebrities that have also come out in so in support of him and his rhetoric, you know? Celebrities like T.I. who basically is like the CEO, well, self-appointed CEO of vertically challenged narcissistic men who, have, who also have Napoleon complexes. He's like the chief in command of that entire group of men, you know? Like, and then he comes out to support um, Jonathan and somehow brings Lil Nas into it. Like, what what did he have to... Now, I'm no fan of Lil Nas either. Like, I wouldn't say I'm a huge fan, but I'll tell you something. When that Montero song comes on, I dance to it. Yeah, I like it. I like the Montero song by Lil Nas X. Now, that's pretty much the only song that I really enjoy to, you know, in terms of a bop. Yes, I like that. But what did he have to do with that? He wasn't even there. See, this is why I said there's a whole lot of homophobia and there's a whole, there's a problem in hip-hop culture. There's a problem. If you, by God forbid, fall into the gay category, you're automatically seen as less than. And so, this is where Little Nas X function, um, falls into the fa uh, factors in because he is somebody who's out and proud and doing his thing. And then all of you Negroes, ignorant Negroes, uneducated, uneducated, hateful Negroes are in your corner hating on this dude because just let him twerk in peace. Who cares? 
it's not it's, it's, it, 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 who cares who cares and then you don't want to bring your children into it you should be worried about what your children are going to find about you when they google you okay don't worry about what little Nas X is doing. He's not responsible for your kids. You are responsible for your kids, not him. You know? He's not responsible for your children. So let you be the responsible for your children. You should be worried about what they're going to find out about you when they hit that Google. Because this T.I. man, this is the same man who, on, on, on the record, went on the record to say that he takes his daughter to the doctors to make sure that her hind man is still intact. And then on the other hand, he's high-fiving his what? His then 13 or 14 year old son when he told when he told him that he was no longer a virgin. So, you know, just take his words. None of this low-hanging type of men actually qualify to be the moral authority. So just take just take their words with like just take it like dust in the wind. It's just it's None of them are the moral authority, Tory Lanez, the baby, T.I., and what's the other one who looks constantly dehydrated, uh, Boosie, Lil Boosie. None of those little Napoleon Complex, na na comp Napoleon Complex reading dudes, none of them classify as a moral authority, okay? Just throw them all in the trash because that's exactly where they belong, okay? And yes, I said it, quote me on that. Don't fight me, fight your liver. Now, in con like, I say all this to say, everyone is always like, oh, freedom of speech, freedom of speech. That's fine. Freedom of speech is fine. But freedom of speech doesn't mean freedom from consequences. I've said this in the video before. For every action, there is a reaction. And for every, that there are consequences and reactions. So, and you are all grown men. Like, this is something that you should, you should already know. So, <sighs> I don't want to get too worked up over this, but I just felt like I had to say something because this is something that's just so tired and just, it's just toxic. It's just, it's toxic. And it's just, it's so old and redundant and it's just, ugh. You know what? I'm just going to wrap this up because in conclusion, the baby, you know, Jonathan Lindale Kirk, you are trash, okay? You are trash and you have a sordid history and a long rap sheet to prove it, okay? You've been arrested, you've, you brag about killing someone and you, you are trash, honey, you are trash. There, I said it. Quote me on that. And but don't, don't come in the comment section trying to fight me and fight, don't fight me, honey, fight your liver because I don't respond to bullshit. I just go ahead and block you, okay? I'm done. Now, as for the rest of you all who support me, you know, protect your energy, spread love, and above all, be kind to, be kind. Just spread love and be kind. I'm just calling out, I'm, I'm calling out an actual hater, so I am going in and just, I'm still trying to pick my words carefully because I don't want to really go down in the gutter, although I probably already have in this video, but it, I feel like I had to say something. Because as a black trans woman, this is just a tired rhetoric. It's just tired, delayed, and run through. You are just, you are all late, okay? So, men like this, they are late, they are delayed, and they are run through, okay? So, yeah, I'll see you in my next video. So, bye everybody. Fly high, my butterflies. <laughs>